so this is lecture two uh, of this course and uh, in this lecture uh, i'll be talking about the iv characteristics of uh, mos device and in lecture one what we have discussed is uh, we have talked about the basic architecture of a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor and uh, we have uh, also mentioned that uh, this MOS device is a particular type of device for which you can have two different conditions. The condition one is you can control or flow of electrons between two terminals by tuning the voltage applied to some other terminal. For example, these two terminals, drain and source. So between these two terminals, you can have a number of electrons and the population of this electron can be controlled by providing a potential at the gate terminal. So therefore, uh, we can consider this particular device as a voltage control register and the second important property what we have mentioned last day is that this mos device is a particular type of device for which it can be turned on even if there is no flow of current so for example suppose this is a situation where uh, you have provided uh, the gate voltage to be higher than the threshold voltage so that uh, already there is a channel of electrons available over here but suppose the drain to source potential difference is equal to zero for example let us consider that the drain potential is at ground as well as the source potential so even if the channel is created even if the device is turned on because the channel is created now but since this drain source potential drop is equal to zero so you don't have any flow of current so even if the device is on, it's turned on, but there is no amount of current flowing through this drain source terminal. So this is a peculiar kind of behavior uh, which you have never experienced in case of uh, diode or a bipolar junction transistor. So with this basic understanding, let us now today uh, derive the expression for this uh, IV characteristics uh, for this MOS device. For this, uh, let us now uh, once again uh, let me let me move to the to a fresh slide, and let me just show you the uh, three-dimensional view once again, uh, so that uh, this description uh, can be made much more illustrative. So, on the top uh, you have this polysilicon get and then you have the oxide layer and this oxide layer is uh, identified by some hashed line like this so this is the oxide layer which uh, serves the purpose of an insulator for this capacitor and then you have the drain and source layer and then this entire thing is uh, constructed on a p-type substrate for n type of MOS and obviously you should have a substrate connection So for the time being, let us just forget about the substrate connection and let us now concentrate on the drain and the source and the gate, these three terminals. Obviously, the substrate potential is having some significant role in controlling the threshold voltage of this particular device. So this is a p-type substrate, as you know, p-type semiconductor, p-type substrate. And these two are in plus, 
and you have oxide over here and this is the polysilicon gate so as you know this is known to be the gate terminal so this one is gate let's consider this to be the drain terminal this to be the source terminal now in order to derive the uh, the current voltage characteristics of this mos device so first of all uh, we have to take a look at the dimension of this drain terminal and moreover you must understand that this iv characteristics of this mos device is basically controlled by the electrons which are available inside the channel so you should have a number of electrons over here whenever this gate potential is higher than the threshold potential that is vth and you should have a number of free electrons which contribute to the flow of current obviously we'll be talking about the distribution and the concentration of these electrons today and how can the current be tuned with the aid of gate source potential and the drain source potential but however if the gate potential is higher than the threshold potential if vgs is greater than the vth then obviously the channel is created you must be having a number of electrons available over here now the entire operation of the device is controlled by those electrons which are present over here which creates the channel so therefore uh, we should uh, identify the channel length and the width so let me just show you this this is known to be the length of the channel so for example uh, let me take a different color uh, let me just consider okay let me take black so this distance is known to be the length of the channel and this difference is known to be the width of the channel so this is w and this is l so now if you just consider over here you will see that there is a kind of protrusions as far as the manufacturing of the device is concerned what i mean to say is that this oxide layer and this drain layer drain source regions so there is a kind of overlapping so as a matter of fact the effective length of the channel is somewhat less as compared to the l which has been shown over here so there is a notion of two types of lengths this l is known to be the length which is drawn in the layout this particular l which is also called as l drawn however this difference if i just consider this difference from here to here where the channel of electrons exist is known as the effective length of the channel sometimes it is also known as ld or l drawn so as you can see over here this l effective is somewhat less as compared to this l drawn or ld so this is the length of the channel drawn in the layout of this particular device and after fabrication what you have is this one that is l effective because whenever you go for fabrication then obviously you can't expect that this particular boundary of this oxide layer and from where the source or drain region starts they cannot be abrupt however there is a kind of overlapping and as a matter of fact this effective length of the channel is somewhat less as compared to the drawn length of the particular device but in case whenever this uh, effective value of this length is much larger then you can simply neglect this particular difference in other words what i can say is if i just consider that particular thing that particular difference if i call this to be say delta l if this value of delta l is much much smaller as compared to this l effective then what you can assume is 
this l effective can be considered to be almost equal to the length of the channel or drawn length in case this difference this overlapping is small enough and in our analysis we will prefer to consider this l effective as l which is also equal to the l drawn however if you are accurate enough in that case this l effective will be somewhat less than the l drawn and this is all about the width of the channel so this is the width of the channel and this is the length of the channel now gradually you will see that the current that is flowing through this brain source terminal depends heavily on the value of this w and l and you have an oxide layer over here and the corresponding capacitance of this oxide layer is being represented by means of a parameter which is known as the oxide capacitance per unit length so ultimately we will be trying to derive the expression in terms of the width and the length of the device or width and the length of this particular channel so c ox is known to be the oxide capacitance per unit length so in order to obtain the total capacitance what you need to do is that you have to multiply this oxide capacitance per unit so let me just also show you the a substrate connection so that uh, you don't get confused with the substrate and the drain source region so this is the substrate connection normally this substrate and source uh, they are considered to be at equipotential this is the substrate or body so c ox uh, which is known to be the oxide capacitance per unit uh, area so let me just change the color so if you have a channel of width w and length l so in that case the total capacitance can be computed by multiplying this oxide capacitance with the total area so if the area is w multiplied with l then the total capacitance provided by this oxide layer is nothing but c ox multiplied with w into l now as far as the property of capacitor is concerned you know the charge dense the charge which is accumulated is given by this particular formula q is equal to c into v now you have to identify which v we are talking about since the effect of capacitor is being developed by providing the potential at the gate terminal so we are talking about the gate potential over here and in most of the circumstances we will be referring all the voltages with respect to the source potential so that's why this v is nothing but the voltage difference between the gate terminal and the source terminal so the charge that is accumulated over here you understand that positive charge will be accumulated at this plate on polysilicon and negative charge electrons will be accumulated over here so this charge is given by q that is equal to c times v so now you have to represent c that is the total capacitance so this total capacitance is being represented by the oxide capacitance per unit area multiplied with the total area so that is nothing but w times l times c ox and the capacitance and the voltage that you are talking about is equal to 
for the timing, let me write down like VGS. And let us check whether this expression is correct or not. So the Q, that is the Q, the charge in the channel. So that's why I have mentioned like QCH. So that is equal to W times L times C ox times VGS. And you have to check whether this expression is correct or not. You must be knowing that whenever the value of VGS, or as long as the value of VGS is less than the threshold voltage, then obviously there is no provision of any mobile charge carriers to be present over here. So as long as this VGS value is less than or equal to VTH, then there is no question of having any mobile charge carrier over here. And that will ultimately contribute to the current flow. So therefore, this expression is not fully correct. Because if VG is equal to zero, or VG is slightly greater than zero, but less than the threshold, then your QCH must be equal to zero. So that equation has to be modified by this one. So QCH, that is equal to W into L into C ox into VGS minus VTH. Now you can check if VGS is equal to VTH. In that case, the charge in the channel is exactly equal to zero. That means it is on the verge of being on. And if VGS exceeds VTH, then the corresponding charge accumulated in the channel can be expressed by means of this particular equation. So the channel charge can be represented by this particular fun function, this particular formula, W into L into C ox into VGS minus VTH, where W is the width of the channel, L is the effective length of the channel, C ox is the oxide capacitance per unit area, and VGS minus VTH is known to be the overdrive voltage. So there is a specific name associated with this particular term, which is known as the overdrive voltage. That means the gate to source voltage, which is required beyond a threshold value, overdrive voltage. And this voltage plays a very vital role in determining the property of a MOS device. So this is known as overdrive voltage, which is nothing but the difference between the gate to source voltage minus the threshold voltage, VGS minus VT. However, this equation, what I have shown over here, QCH is equal to WLC ox into VGS minus VTH, that is not also perfectly true. You have to modify to a certain extent whenever the drain to source potential difference is not equal to zero. So here we have considered, okay, the drain potential and the source, so drain and source, they are at the same potential, they are kept at zero reference potential. So in that case, you can visualize, okay, the charge in the channel can be represented like W into L into C ox into VGS minus VTH. Because under this condition, you'll find that you have a capacitor over here. You can have an effect of capacitor. And if I consider that the oxide capacitance per unit area being constant, because ultimately it's a function of the manufacturing process. So if you use a particular value of material over here, normally we use a silicon dioxide as the insulator. And if uh, the distribution is uniform, and if this uh, uh, that particular thickness, if that is uniformly constant, let me consider this thickness to be say, oxide thickness to be say T ox, now, if this T ox is uniformly constant, that means there is no change, no gradual change over here. If this is uniformly constant, and if this uh, material is, uh, I mean, silicon dioxide is developed uniformly over and above this uh, silicon layer, then you can consider that, okay, the oxide capacitance per unit area will be constant. That is fine. However, If you want to find out the channel charge, 
So that's a function of this capacitor. And as well as it's a function of the voltage difference applied between the two plates of the capacitor. Now, as long as these drain and source, they are at the same potential and they are at the ground potential, for example, zero potential, then you understand that the potential applied at the positive plate of this capacitor is equal to the gate potential, that is Vg. And in the negative plate, you have zero over here, you have zero over here. So that means it's uniform. So in the positive plate, you have a fixed potential, that is VGS. In the negative plate, you have a zero potential over here. So the difference is VGS. So VGS minus VTH is the water voltage. And accordingly, you can calculate the expression for the channel charge. However, the situation will be somewhat different when the drain and the source are not at the same potential. And in that case, uh, you cannot write the channel charge by means of this simplified expression. So to illustrate the same thing, let me just uh, show you the scenario. So now with a two-dimensional view. So this is the, uh, say, let me use the same color. Now you can understand which one is oxide and which one is the gate. So hatched portion indicates the oxide layer. And on the top of this hatched layer, you have the metal that acts as gate. And you have this source and the drain. And now you have this substrate over here. So now you can understand which one is so this one is source, this one is drain, and this one is gate. Now already we have applied some uh, positive potential at the gate terminal, which is higher than the threshold. So this is VG or VGS. And we have assumed that this VGS is greater than VTH, so that the channel is created. and Moreover, what we have done is uh, we have applied some positive potential at the drain end, VDS. And the source is at zero potential. So now, or what you can do is instead of writing VDS, you can also put a VDD over here. And the difference between drain to source is nothing but VDD. Anyway. So now you can understand that the drain and the source, they are not at the same potential. So the drain to source potential difference is greater than zero. And obviously you'll be having a number of electrons, free electrons, which are available for the current conduction between the drain and the source. Now this part of the device beneath this oxide layer, will act simply as a register because you have electrons over here and now you have a potential difference of VDS between this terminal and this terminal. So accordingly, you understand that the electrons will flow from this source end and ultimately it will be moving towards the drain end. And as a matter of fact, the conventional current will flow from the drain end to the source end. Now, since the current is flowing through a resistive path, you understand that from here to here, from source to drain, the voltage difference, I mean, if I just consider the potential at any point between this source and drain end, so this potential is not constant. At the source end, this potential is equal to zero. If you then measure uh, this particular thing by means of some voltmeter, you'll find that here the potential is equal to zero because source is already connected to the ground potential. So potential over here is equal to zero. Now, as you move further, because now the positive current, positive current will flow from the drain side to the source side, drain end to the source end. So as you move from the source to the drain, you'll see that the local potential will increase. 
so here the local potential is equal to zero and as you move further from this point to this point from source to drain you will find that the local potential will increase from zero to vds so we don't know how does this vary but obviously this will be minimum at the source end and this will be maximum at the drain end so at any point along these channels if i consider any point over here now let me just uh, show you side by side so uh, suppose this is my so let me consider this is the beginning of the channel now if this is identified by means of a variable x where x signifies the distance from the source end so this is x so this corresponds to x is equal to 0 and this corresponds to x is equal to l so that is the beginning of the channel that is the end of the channel from 0 to l the channel will exist then you find over here at the source end the local potential is equal to 0 and as you move further from the source end the local potential will increase now as the local potential increases now now you can uh, you have to remember this particular formula q is equal to c into v now what is that v so that v i can write that is nothing but i can consider this like v1 minus v2 where v1 is the applied potential at plate 1 for any capacitor and v2 is the applied potential at plate 2 so v1 is constant uniformly constant that is fine now as you move from source end to the drain end you will find that for the local capacitors the corresponding applied voltages are not the same at the source end this is maximum because v2 is minimum over here and as you move towards the drain end since v2 increases the corresponding v that means the voltage difference will reduce and as a matter of fact if we just consider the charge which is present inside this channel if we just draw this charge profile it will look something like that so here so let me draw with respect to qch so qch will be maximum over here at the source end and it will be minimum in the drain end so it will it will fall so it will fall i don't know what is the pattern but it will fall it will be maximum at the source end because here the voltage between the two plates of the capacitor voltage difference between the two plates of the capacitor local capacitor obviously it is maximum and here the voltage difference between the two plates of the capacitor is minimum now since the capacity i mean the charge in the channel is proportional to the voltage difference for a fixed value of the capacitance then obviously this will be the profile of the charge in the channel inside the channel and as a matter of fact since the if you consider any arbitrary value of x over here then the voltage difference between the plate 1 and plate 2 is never vgs rather vgs minus some vx where vx is the local potential at the corresponding value of x so what we have uh, written already the expression for qch so it was something like that in the last slide we have written like qch is given by w times l times c ox times vgs minus vth vgs minus vth that was the expression in which case the both the drain as well as the source potential was equal to zero but this time now you have a local potential which is non zero so therefore this particular expression of qch will get modified like 
W times L times C ox into VGS minus VTH minus V of X. Minus V of X. Where we can define V of X is equal to zero for X is equal to zero. And that is equal to VDS when X equal to L. That means X is equal to zero means uh, you are at the source end. And X is equal to L means you are at the drain end. So that is the expression for the charge inside the channel for a non-zero value of the drain to source potential. Now, had this been the case, now you can also find out the charge density. That means the charge per unit length. Because the charge is distributed like this, and you understand that this charge distribution is not at all uniform. As you move further from the source end, you can have less amount of charge for the current conduction. So accordingly, you can also find out the charge per unit length, which is known also as the charge density. So this charge density, uh, I can write like QD, D stands for density. So that is nothing but QCH divided by L, L is the total length, that can be written as W times C ox times VGS minus VTH minus VX. So now the expression for the charge density inside the channel can be written like W times C ox times VGS minus VTH minus VX. So that is the expression for the charge density, QD. That means the charge per unit length. Now to derive the expression for this uh, current voltage characteristics, you have to consider, you have to remember some of the equations from physics, from basic physics, which you already know. One is this expression, the expression of the velocity, which is related to the electric field. You know, V is given by mu times E, where mu is the mobility of the charge carrier, and E is the corresponding electric field, and V is the velocity the charge carrier. And you must be knowing the expression for E, the electric field is given by minus the derivative of the voltage with respect to the D stand, that is minus dVtx. So from that, you can write V is given by minus mu into E, and E is equal to minus dVtx, so minus mu dvdx so that is the expression for the voltage of the charge carrier given by minus mu into dvdx now once again if i uh, consider this particular uh, architecture of the mos device this two dimensional view how can you find out the expression for the current so as you know current is given by the rate of change of the charge carrier with respect to time. I is given by dq dt. So in unit time, how many charges you are getting? That is nothing but the expression for the current. I is given by dq dt. Now in unit time, if I consider that the velocity of the charge carrier, so you must be understanding that here the charge carriers are nothing but the electrons. Because as I've already mentioned in the first lecture, that unlike BJT, it's a unipolar device. MOS is a unipolar device, where for N MOS, the charge carriers are the electrons, and for the P MOS, the charge carriers are the holes. So here, the current conduction takes place because of the flow of electrons only. Now, if I consider that the velocity of the electrons, the charge carriers over here, is given by V, then you must understand that in one second, in one second, the charge carriers will travel a distance of 
v in one second they will travel a distance of v then what about this qt qt is nothing but the charge density that means the charge amount of charge in unit length so now if you consider okay this is one arbitrary point over here and suppose this distance from here to here is given by v that means the charge carriers which are available over here at this particular point at time t is equal to 0 second so all these charge carriers will travel a distance of v after 1 second so all of them will be collected at this particular point after 1 second so what about the total number of charge carriers which are traveling in 1 second you know that the charge density is given by qd that means the per unit length the amount of charge that is qd so in 1 second the total number of charge that will travel this particular distance is nothing but v times qd so v times qd is the amount of charge which will travel in 1 second and that is equal to minus mu times now you can write down the expression for qd as well mu times dv dx and the expression for uh, qd is nothing but w c ox into vgs minus vt8 minus v of x now what is that in the left hand side this is nothing but the amount of charge carriers the total number of charge carriers which are traveling in one second and that is the notion of current so the current what i can write over here the drain current this id is given by this v times qd that is the rate of change of charge carriers or the number of charge carriers which are traveling in one second so this id is given by v times qd and now you have to remember that since here the charge carriers are the electrons and the current that we are talking about is a positive current and you know conventionally the electrons will flow in a direction opposite to the direction of the current flow so you should put a negative sign outside so this id is given by minus of v times qd so this minus and minus will become plus and this mu is for the electrons mu of the electrons so that's why mu n p ox w vgs minus vth minus vx to dvdx so from that id dx is given by mu n p ox w vgs minus vth minus vx to dv so now uh, you have to in order to find out the expression for the drain current you need to integrate this expression with the prescribed limit so here the integration is carried on x and here the integration is carried on v 
so our uh, discussion starts with x is equal to 0 that is the beginning of the channel and it ends at x is equal to l and at x equal to 0 the value of vx is equal to 0 and at x is equal to l the value of vx is equal to vds as we have already mentioned so now you can put the limit so here the variation is from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to l and here the variation vx is equal to 0 to vx is equal to vds now the current is essentially constant with respect to the length because the amount of electrons which are leaving this terminal so they will be ultimately connected to the drain end so there is no other way for the electrons to move so the current is remaining constant so i can take this id outside and then if you integrate this integration dx x is equal to 0 to l will give you l so id into l that is equal to you can also take this constant mu and c ox so this product mu and c ox is entirely dependent upon the fabrication because uh, mu n is constant that is electron mobility and c ox as i have already mentioned the oxide capacitance per unit area so as long as you go for a particular uh, fabrication process this c ox oxide capacitance per unit area will be remaining constant and w is also independent of this vx so i can take this entire thing outside and then you have vgs minus vth minus vx dv then what you have is you have vgs minus vth is constant so this multiplied with v minus or uh, i should write to v of x over here so that it is becoming a function of x So this is like VGS minus VTH into VX minus, if you integrate VX, it will be half of VX square. And the limit is from zero to VDS. So ultimately what we have is ID is equal to mu n C ox w over l then you have vgs minus vth and then you have vds minus half vds square so this is the expression of current and remember this expression is valid only for vgs greater than Vth. Because if the value of Vgs is less than or equal to Vth, then obviously there is no provision of current because the channel is created if and only if the gate to source voltage just exceeds the threshold voltage. If the Vgs is less than Vth, then obviously there will be no question of current conduction because there is no provision of electron inside the channel. So this expression is valid only for so this is valid only for vgs greater than vth because then only the channel is created and you have a flow of current so now if you would like to draw the variation of this particular current with respect to so now you have two different voltages Now you have two different voltages over here. One is the gate to source voltage and second one is the drain to source voltage. So for a given MOSFET, the threshold voltage is constant. So now for a fixed mu and C ox, W by L and VTH, so ID is essentially a function of gate to source voltage and the drain to source voltage. So now you have to observe we need to find out how does this ID vary with respect to the gate to source voltage and with respect to the drain to source voltage. So since it's a function of two different variables, gate to source voltage and the drain to source voltage, so we will be 
observing the variation of id with respect to one variable or one voltage at a time keeping the other value constant so let us start with observing the variation of id with respect to vds when vgs is constant so uh, let me once again write down the expression for id here so this id is given by mu n c ox w by l vgs minus vth into vds minus how vds square so it's a function and obviously this is true for vgs greater than vth when the get to source voltage is higher than the threshold voltage so now if you'd like to draw the variation of id with respect to vds now let us consider that okay vds is varying and uh, we would like to plot this variation of id with respect to vds for a fixed vds so id versus vds how does it look like it looks like a parabola because if this is constant some k k times x minus half x square so y is equal to some k1 times k2 into x minus half x square so ultimately it looks like a parabola and what is the peak of the parabola how can you find out the peak of the parabola so the peak can be obtained by differentiating this id with respect to vds and making the result is equal to zero so if you differentiate this id with respect to vds what you get is you have so did did dvds that will give you the peak value so this is nothing but mu n c ox w by l vgs minus vth minus vds so if you equate this to be zero then you can have the peak value of id so id peak so since uh, this mu and c of w over l is non zero quantity so the peak value of current is obtained at vds is equal to vgs minus vth and that is equal to the overdrive voltage as we have mentioned previously so if you uh, want to point out this is my this is the point this is the point where vds equals vgs minus vth so at this particular point you have the peak of this parabola at this point you have a peak of this parabola and it will increase like this so this is the peak value and the peak value can be obtained so the peak value is obtained at vgs minus vth and if you simply put vgs minus vth against vds and then you can ultimately obtain the id peak or max of id that is equal to you can check it it is uh, vgs minus vth whole square minus half vgs minus vth whole square though ultimately it is equal to half mu n c ox w over l vgs minus vth whole square so that is equal to so this value is equal to id peak so id peak is given by uh, this half mu n c ox w over l into vgs minus vth whole square and that is obtained at vds is equal to vgs minus vth now this variation of id against vds has been shown for a fixed value of vgs now if you change the value of vgs suppose this has been drawn for a fixed value of vgs and if you reduce the value of vgs let me consider another value so let me consider this one is for vgs1 
this one is for vgs1 and let me draw the same expression same graph for a different value of vgs where vgs is less than vgs1 and then obviously the point at which the id achieves its peak is also less so let me consider another value over here which is given by vgs2 minus vth where vgs2 is less than vgs1 so under this case the peak occurs at a slightly lower value of vds and the peak value is also less because the peak value is also function of this overdrive voltage so let me consider this is the point so it will be something like that similarly if you select a value of vgs which is higher than vgs1 then it will be obtained over here the peak value will be obtained over here and you have a higher peak so what you can find is for a fixed value of vgs the variation of id with respect to vds will have a shape like this and it will attain a peak at vds equal to vgs minus vds that is overdrive voltage now before we go further let me once again rewrite the equation of this uh, drain current that is given by mu n p ox w by l vgs minus vth into vds minus half vds square so apparently it will uh, it will have a shape of a parabolic function as we have already shown but however uh, you can also approximate uh, this expression of id for different ranges of vds for example if you consider okay this first term or if you if you consider that uh, the value of vds is small enough with respect to vgs minus vth in that case what you can do is you can just neglect this second term with respect to the first term because in the first term you have a linear value for vds and the second term you have the quadratic value for the vds so for lower value of vds what you can do is you can just neglect this part with respect to this first part now if vgs minus vth into vds because these are the things that you can control you cannot control this mu and you cannot control cox because this is entirely dependent upon the fabrication and uh, this w by l once the device is constructed then the geometry of the device is fixed you cannot change the weight you neither you can neither change the weight nor change the length of the device but you can how you can control the current flow just by changing the voltage applied in the different terminals right so to tune the value of id what you can do is you can just vary these different voltages which are applied over here so if this value is much much greater as compared to the second part much much greater than half vds square which means vds is much much less as compared to two times vgs minus vth two times overdrive voltage under this condition if this is true then id can be approximated as then then you can write id approximately as mu n c ox w by l into vgs minus vth into vds so this second order term is vanished under this condition when the value of vds is much much smaller with respect to the two times of the water voltage then id can be approximated like mu n c ox w over l vgs minus vth into vds 
Now, if you observe the MOS device in symbolic form, it looks something like that. You have a drain terminal over here, you have a source terminal, and you have a gate terminal. Now, this expression is valid for a fixed value of VGS. Let me consider a fixed value of VGS. That means uh, let me just apply a battery over here at the gate, gate terminal where the value of VGS is greater than VTH. That means the device is on. And now suppose you just change the value of the drain potential over here. Suppose the potential, app, I mean the voltage applied at the drain end is varying. So now if you just observe this device right now, so this is the drain to source potential. I mean, this is VDS. This one is VDS. And this is the amount of current which is flowing. That is IDS or ID. So now if you just uh, visualize this MOS or if you just uh, Consider this as a black box. Then what you can see is this VDS, this ID, the current that is flowing between these two terminal is a function of VDS. That's great. And moreover, the resistance as offered by this device is a function of this particular gate to source voltage. So we have also established this phenomenon in the last class in lecture one intuitively. Through intuition, we have understood that, okay, if the VGS, the gate to source potential is increased, then you have more amount of charge carriers in the channel. So therefore the resistance reduces. So for a given value of the drain to source voltage, you have more amount of current. Now that can be ultimately validated by having this equation. So ID is equal to mu and C of W over L VGS minus VTH into VDS. So from that, if you just calculate ID upon VDS, which is nothing but the inverse of the resistance, that is equal to mu and C of W over L VGS minus VTH. So therefore, the on resistance of the device, which is equal to 1 upon ID by VDS, that is given by on resistance 1 upon mu n C ox W over L into VGS minus VTH. So now you can see if you increase the value of VGS, if the gate to source voltage is increased, now the resistance of the device reduces proportionately. So now we have arrived at the analytical expression of the on resistance of the device. Last day we have we have mentioned that okay, if the gate to source voltage is increased, then the device will be capable of getting more current, so the resistance will be less. But we did not calculate or we did not find out any expression against our claim. Now today we have obtained this expression for the on resistance that is given by 1 upon mu and C of W over L, which is constant for a fixed device dimension and for a fixed fabrication technology. And ultimately it varies proportionately with 1 upon VGS minus VT. So now under this region, when VDS is much, much less as compared to 2 times VGS minus VTH, then the on resistance of the device is equal to 1 upon this mu and C of W over L VGS minus VTH. And moreover, for a fixed value of VGS, this seems to be constant. If VGS is fixed, then it seems to be constant. And if VGS varies, then it is also a varying quantity. So ultimately what we have, we have already shown for a fixed value of VGS, how does it vary? 
suppose this is my VDS, this one is ID, and it increases like this up to VDS equal to VGS minus VTH, that is the overdrive voltage. I can also write VOD. Every time I should not write VDG, VGS minus VTH, rather I should write VOD, that is overdrive VGS minus VTH to save space. Okay. So that value, you know, this is the peak value of the current obtained at VOD. And if the value of VDS, the drain to source voltage, is much, much less than two times the overdrive voltage, that means if VDS is very small, then this parabola can be approximated by a straight line. So over here, as you know, over here for a very small value of X, this X square can be simply neglected, can be simply avoided, and this can be approximated as a linear term. So over here, you find that this current and voltage, they are linearly dependent. So over this region, the MOSFET can be used as a linear register. It acts like a register and the value of the resistance is remaining almost fixed if the VGS value is fixed, right? And this part of the graph is known as the triode region of the MOSFET. This part of the graph when the value of VDS is less than VOD, that is overdrive voltage, that is known to be the triode region, or in some other books, you can also find this region to be known as the linear region of the device characteristics. So this is known as the triode region, as long as the value of VDS is less than the VOD, that is overdrive voltage, triode region. Now you have to understand what happens beyond this uh, overdrive voltage because uh, you can always apply a drain to source voltage which is higher than the overdrive voltage. That is quite expected. Now, as far as this equation goes, so if I once again go back to our earlier equation, this equation, as far as this equation is concerned, if you just uh, follow mathematically this equation, then it suggests that if you increase the value of VDS, so it will attain a peak at uh, VDS equal to uh, VOD, as I've already mentioned. And mathematically, if you go beyond this limit, beyond this value of VDS, then ID will drop down because the peak is obtained at VDS is equal to VOD. But that is not a kind of uh, behavior we look for because we should, we should not expect for a device for which the current falls after a certain amount of voltage. And when the people have, uh, they have uh, performed experiments, this kind of device, by increasing the voltage, drain to source voltage, beyond the overdrive voltage, they have observed a different kind of behavior. And that behavior is not at all comparable with what you have shown over here. So to understand that behavior, first of all, we have to once again go back to the two dimensional view of the MOS device. And what happens for VGS value, uh, VDS value greater than the overdrive voltage. So let me once again draw the same structure. So you have oxide layer, you have drain, source, substrate. This is oxide layer. This is uh, N plus. This is also N plus. Source, drain, gate. This is P-type substrate. And that is the beginning of the uh, channel at X is equal to zero and the source end. That is the beginning and that is the end. So this corresponds to X is equal to zero. This corresponds to X is equal to L.
Now what happens already we have mentioned uh, that uh, at x is equal to 0 the local potential that we have that is dx in the channel and that dx is equal to 0. So if I just consider the potential difference as perceived by this capacitor is given by Vgs minus Vth minus Vx. Now this potential difference is valid for x is equal to 0 to x is equal to L. So at x equal to 0 over here, this difference is given by Vgs minus Vth. And since Vgs is greater than Vth, so obviously you can have a channel of electrons over here. Now what happens over here? At this end, at this end, the difference is given by Vgs minus Vth minus Vds. And if I select a value of Vds to be exactly equal to Vgs minus Vta, that is overdrive voltage, then what happens at this particular point of the channel, that means at the drain end, the applied voltage between the two plates of the capacitor is becoming zero. Now, if it is exactly zero, then obviously there is no question of the channel over here at this particular point. So if I select a value of Vds to be exactly equal to Vgs minus Vth, that is overdrive voltage, then V12, as I mentioned, V12 at the drain end will be equal to zero. And if it is exactly zero, that means you don't have any electron, free electrons over here for the current conduction. That means the channel has ended at this point with no electrons available. Now, what happens if you increase the value of VDS beyond this overdrive voltage? Now, if you increase the value of VDS beyond this overdrive voltage, then the point at which this V12 becoming zero will be inside this channel because here it is Vgs minus Vth and here it is Vgs minus Vth minus Vds. And in any point over here, if I just consider that difference, V12 at any arbitrary point x is given by Vgs minus Vth minus V of x. Now, if the value of Vds is higher than Vod, and as I've already mentioned, since the current is flowing through this channel, so there will be a variation of the local voltage. So the value of local voltage at the source end will be equal to zero. And at the drain end, it will be VDS. Now, if the local voltage, I mean, so let me just write it down. So the value of Vx is equal to zero at x is equal to zero. And that is equal to VDS at x is equal to L. Now the voltage difference between the two plates of the capacitor will be equal to zero if the local voltage Vx is equal to Vgs minus Vth. Now, if the value of the drain to source potential is greater than Vgs minus Vth, then Vx will become Vgs minus Vth for less value of x. Less value of, uh, I mean, let me just write it down. Vds is greater than 
VGS minus VTH, that is overdrive voltage. Then what we have, VX is equal to VGS minus VTH for a lower value of X, for X less than L. And accordingly, V1 to X will becoming zero for x less than l. Now under this condition, we can say that the channel is pinched off at this particular point. Whenever the voltage difference between the two different plates of the capacitor is becoming zero, that means the available voltage is not there for the creation of the channel. You have to ensure that the difference should be at least the threshold voltage. Difference between the two plates should be at least equal to the threshold voltage. So that the channel is created. Now, if that value is equal to zero, that means the channel is pinched off. So accordingly, in the equation what we have derived last time using this particular formula. So using this particular formula. So there will be certain change in the limit of the integration. Everything will be remaining as it is. But now you understand that the variation will be not from 0 to L, but from some 0 to L dashed, where L dashed is less than L. And right at this moment, so uh, what I can do is I can uh, simply uh, Rewrite the expression ID dx that is equal to integration mu n c ox w over l vgs minus vth minus v of x. Now here dv or dvx. Now over here, the limit is from x is equal to previous, it was 0 to L. Now I can say that it is not from 0 to L, rather from 0 to L dash. And the vx varies from, not from 0 to vds, rather from 0 to vgs minus vta, that is overdrive voltage. If I consider this is the point, this is the point at which v1 to x is equal to 0. So, uh, okay, let me check uh, this one of it. Suppose this is the point. This is the point where v1 to x is equal to 0. And suppose this difference is L last. This difference is L last. So you have some electrons over here inside the channel, but at this particular point, the enough amount of voltage has not been developed between the two plates of the capacitor, and therefore the channel is pinched up at this particular point. So under this condition, the limits of the integration will no longer be from 0 to L, rather from 0 to L dashed. And the value of Vx is not from 0 to VG, Vds, rather from 0 to Vgs minus Vth. Because the value of Vx will be equal to Vgs minus Vth at this particular value of x, that is equal to L dashed. Now, right at this moment, I can make another approximation that this difference from L to L dash, I mean L minus L dash, that difference is very small to be neglected for the time being, so that this limit of integration for this one can be kept as it is, that is from 0 to L, assuming that L is equal to L dash right at this moment. And that is only true if the length of the channel is large, is few microns. However, if the length of the channel is small, then you cannot neglect this L minus L dash 
and accordingly you have to take into account and then it will ultimately lead to an effect a second order effect which is known as the channel length modulation so we'll be discussing the effect of this one in some later modules in some later lecture but right at this moment you just consider that this difference is not that significant so i can safely integrate it from 0 to l i mean keeping uh, l equal to l dash however this one is from 0 to vgs minus vgh so if you do this uh, calculation so here i am just neglecting the second order effect and assuming l to be exactly equal to l dash id then it will be id times l then you can take this one outside mu and c ox i think uh, l was not there this l was not there you have only w you have only w over here so then mu and c ox w over l vgs minus vts minus vx now, if you integrate this one, then you have VGS minus VTS. So let me just show you. So VGS minus VTH into V of X minus half V of X square. And this integration is to be done from 0 to VGS minus VTH. So then VGS minus VTH multiplied with VGS minus VTH, that is VGS minus VTH whole square minus half of VGS minus VTH whole square. Then ultimately it gives rise to half mu n C ox W by L VGS minus VTH whole square. And interestingly, this value of ID is now found out to be independent of VGS. So under this condition, when the channel is pinched off by applying a drain to source voltage higher than the get to source voltage minus the threshold voltage higher than the overdrive voltage, then interestingly, we find out that the ID is no longer a function of VDS. Rather, it's a strong function of VGS minus VTS. Or it's a strong function of the overdrive voltage. Obviously, we have made this assumption. And in some le later lecture, we will be out of this assumption and we will make the exact calculation and we will also find out what will be the effect of using L dash instead of using L. However, for the time being, if we just uh, forget about this particular approximation, then we find out that I it is becoming constant and that value is equal to half mu and C of W over L, which is minus VTH whole square. So now if you go back to the previous our previous diagram over here, so for VDS greater than the overdrive voltage, we find that the, the current value is equal to half mu and C of W over L VGS minus VTH whole square. And surprisingly, that value is nothing but the peak value that you obtain over here. So now, if you just uh, draw the current beyond this overdrive, then ultimately, as of now, it seems to be constant. As of now, it seems to be constant. So there is no fluctuation with respect to VDS. So even if you change the VDS, it is remaining constant like this. However, if you reduce the value of VGS, it will also be constant, but the constant value will be dependent upon the value of VGS minus VTH. And since the, the current value is constant over here, once again, if I just draw the same thing. So here you find the current value is remaining constant. Even if the VDS increases beyond the overdrive voltage, the current is remaining constant. So that's why this region is known as the saturation region of the IV characteristics. This is known to be the saturation region of the IV characteristics because here the current gets saturated. Even if you change the drain to source voltage beyond this overdrive value, the current is remaining constant. So this saturation and the saturation that you have uh, 
observed in case of bipolar devices. So these two saturation concepts are not the same. So for the bipolar devices, you don't have the concept of current saturation. There you have the concept of voltage saturation. But here for this MOS device, we find that in saturation region, the current is remaining constant. So current gets saturated. So you may think that beyond this limit, when the drain to source voltage exceeds overdrive voltage, you can also use the MOS device as a current source because the current is essentially constant. So therefore, depending upon the value of the drain to source voltage, you can use the device in different applications. If the value of the drain to source voltage is very, very small, then you can simply use as a register, a voltage dependent register, as you have seen already. And if the value of the drain to source voltage is much, much larger or larger with respect to the overdrive voltage, then you can also use it as a current source. So uh, that is the uh, IV characteristics uh, of a MOS device, what we have discussed today. Although we have uh, neglected some of the uh, important thing like uh, while derivating this particular thing, the expression for the current, the drain current with pinch of condition, we have just neglected uh, the difference between L and L dash. And in some of the later class, we'll be obviously focusing on the impact of this particular thing on the current fluctuation of this particular device in the name of channel length modulation. However, uh, today's lecture basically deals with the analytical expression of the drain current for any MOS device with respect to the gate to source voltage and the drain to source voltage. And accordingly, we have identified two regions of operations for the MOS. One is known to be the triode region, in which case the drain to source voltage is less than the overdrive voltage. And second one is the saturation region where the drain to source voltage is greater than the overdrive voltage. In the triode region, we have seen that as you increase the voltage the current will also increase initially it will increase proportionately with respect to the voltage and then it will increase parabolically with respect to the voltage and in the saturation region the current is remaining essentially constant with respect to the drain to source voltage accordingly you can use the device for different applications so from this id vds graph and from this ID VGS graph, we can also extract some useful and important properties of the MOS just by finding out the derivative of ID with respect to VDS, by finding out the derivative of ID with respect to VGS. And these, proper, and these parameters play a very important role in controlling the behavior of the circuit, behavior of this device in different analog circuits. And that I'll be discussing in my next class.